G'day and welcome to Crispy Audio. When it comes time to selecting a speaker cable or building one yourself, you're going to need to decide if you want to use a spade termination for the end or the banana plug. There's pros and cons for each of them. Um, they're both very different, obviously, and uh, a lot of people are undecided uh, which way to go. So I just want to talk about the merits of each of these. Uh, and then hopefully that can help you to decide which one's best for you. Okay, now I'll talk about the spade connector first. Uh, obviously it's fairly self-explanatory of, of what it is. Uh, there's a standardized size for the cutouts, uh, eight millimeters, and it just secures into a regular binding post, just like so. Now, the pros of the spade connector is that you can really torque that down nice and tightly. Uh, it's not going anywhere and I mean that's that's super permanent. So I really like that. You've got even pressure around the spade. Um, but most importantly is the surface area. You've, you've got, you know, basically that's probably about a millimeter uh, in thickness. Uh, all the way around there. So you've you've probably got 20 mil by one mil. So the actual surface area uh, is is maximized. I mean, it's it's immense, uh, which is fantastic. So I love that. The other thing is that uh, again, if your if your speaker, like say you've got a small stand mount speaker that's well off the ground, then at least with the spade, the cable exit is also pointing to the ground. So if you've got something coming out of here and then having to be to be pulled by the speaker cable, you're gonna get some stress uh, over time on the bend. Whereas a spade connector will generally exit downwards towards the floor anyway. So regardless of how heavy your speaker cable is, um, you've got a straight uh, pull on that uh, on the termination. So that's going to be safer and more secure. So that's your spade. Now this is our banana plug. There are actually a lot more differences between brands of banana plugs than there are of spades. And some of them that you will find have a locking screw. Uh, and what happens here is this pushes a pin up towards the banana and it's rounded out at the edge, so you may not be able to see it, but basically it's gonna expand the center of that banana plug and create a really tight junction to the binding post. So once you're in there, uh, it's quite loose and you screw that up uh, and then it's it's super tight. So. I usually recommend if you can try and find one that, that has a locking mechanism, it's a good way to go. Uh, some of the other methods of, uh, of keeping that tension inside is by having some, uh, some slits alongside the banana uh, and then they splay out quite a bit. So when it's inserted, that also creates tension inside the binding post. Now, this is where the differences lie. So in the spade, I talked about the surface area that you've got to deal with. With the banana, in an ideal world, the entire surface area of what's exposed here is in contact with the binding post. In reality, that's just not the case. Um, unless you've got a perfect mate to the binding post, you find as, as you expand this out, you, you get an apex, uh, and that is where your contact is. So you've got this very fine line uh, around, around the single point. Uh, and then you may also get a second contact point if there's a little bit of stress, uh, which, which there inevitably will be because the, the wire is pulling that sort of backwards a little bit. So you'll probably get a secondary contact point at the very tip of the banana plug as well. So multiple contact points, uh, and which is not ideal, and the surface area between that and that 
is still going to be far less uh, than the surface area that the spade can offer. So look, that's, that's the banana plug. I mean, that's, that's the physics of it. You can't really get around it. Um, but the banana plug does offer a lot more versatility um, because a lot of, uh, well, a lot of companies will use a binding post that, that only has the option of the banana plug to go in or it might be it might be recessed so there might be the chassis of the amplifier and then this is a lot further back in so if you've got a spade you've got to be coming out the side or something crazy so so going straight in is ideal uh, if you're the kind of person that changes your gear around a lot there's a lot to be said for just simply doing that and you're in rather than having to you know, muck around with, with the uh, nut on there, uh, with the spade. Access might be difficult. Your, your amplifier might be on the bottom shelf of the rack. Uh, and again, so trying to trying to get this down and underneath and working out the angle. So there's, there's a lot to be said for the banana plug, not in terms of its contact, but in terms of the versatility of installation. Well, now that you've got a clearer understanding of the differences between those two termination methods, hopefully you can make a well-informed choice about which way to go. Uh, I say to people, if you're still unsure, the safe play is to go for spades at one end and bananas at the other. So if your equipment changes down the track, you can always flip that cable around uh, and you're not going to be stuck. If your system is fixed and you can use spades both ends, that would be my recommendation. Thanks again for watching. Uh, please subscribe for more audio tips from Crispy Audio. Just one last point, because I'm sure this is going to come up in the comments. Um, there's obviously a second protrusion with a WBT banana plug. And a lot of customers just think, well, that's, that's not going to work with my binding post. And that's often correct. They've designed it so that it mates perfectly with their own brand of binding post for obvious reasons. And what it's designed to do, it's, it's not, they don't actually specify what it's for, but if you can imagine if, if that's not there and you've put this in here and your speaker's got quite a lot of tension because you've got a heavy speaker cable or, or the binding post is high off the ground, the pull on this is, is going to really pull on the banana plug so what this does is once it's in that's that's acting as a support so it, it can't be it can't be pulled down so all the stress is on this this clear plastic tube uh, which takes the stress off this so it's it's a really good system uh, but like I say it, it, it only works uh, well I, I haven't come across another binding post brand that will work with this because it obviously relies on the, the diameter uh, of the binding post. But don't worry, it is very easily removable just with a pair of side cutters. Uh, if you can just snap that off uh, anywhere along, like as, as far up as you can get basically. Uh, and that's gonna work with any brand of binding post.